Well, I'm excited to be with you again this week as we're entering into the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. The Bible says that darkness will get darker and darker, but the light will get brighter and brighter. And a great light has risen upon us and His glory shall rest upon us and so many things. This revival is going to sweep a minimum now, a minimum of a billion souls into the kingdom of God before the Lord's return. And I'm excited to be alive at a time like this. Uh, if you just look at the external things, dear Lord, don't make your steady diet just be the news. You, you'll want to crawl under a rock somewhere. Our diet has to be the Word of God, and our fellowship has to be with the Holy Ghost. And that's the joy of the Lord is our strength, not the news programs, not, not what we see going on around us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Remember, the kingdom of God is within you, and that means it's within you wherever you go. All right, that's not today's lesson. The title of today's lesson is No Word of God is Void of Power. You might be going, well, where is that in the, in the Bible? And it's really not worded that way in the King James. But it is from a very, very familiar verse in the King James. This one comes from the Amplified, which the Amplified Bible does exactly that. It brings out all of the nuances of the Greek language that our Bible was originally written in. And this comes from when the angel came to tell Mary that she was going, when, you know, she was a virgin. And the angel comes and tells her that she's going to conceive and bear a child, which shall be the Son of God. And in the, in the course of all of that, of course, she says, well, how will this be, seeing I know not a man, and so forth, you know. Well, in the course of that discussion, in fact, if you want to look it up in the King James, it's Luke 1 and verse 37. The part that I put on there is, when the angel said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Well, that's good right there. I mean, he's, if that's, if that, that's not a bad translation. The angel's telling her, I believe God's able to do this. <laughs> okay, nothing's impossible. But see, in the Greek, he actually said this, and this is what the Amplified brings out. And I'm when I say Amplified, I'm talking about the Amplified classic version, the classic version. I'm I'm not a big fan of the more modern one that's recently come out. I like the classic one. <laughs> Luke 137 in the Amplified Bible. For with God, nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word from God shall be without power. When I read that, I immediately, I just immediately remember Jesus saying that the word is like a seed. And we're back to Mark 4, which really is where he kind of started us from all the way back to last of June of last year. The sower sows the word. Every seed, and I'm going to, I have uh, some notes today. I've been spending time with the Lord and he's given me this lesson. I don't want to leave some points out. So today, unless he takes us a different direction, I'm going to stay fairly close with these notes because I don't want to miss anything. But see, every seed, when he says no, no word of God, no word from God shall be without power. Every seed is like that. We all know every seed has an image in it and every seed has the power to produce that image. Well, the word of, he said the sower sows the word, but he compared it with a seed all the way through Mark chapter 4 and in other places where he taught it. Every seed has the power to produce what's in it. A corn seed will produce corn. Apple seed will produce apples. Watermelon seed, glory to God, will produce watermelons and so forth. And he said the word of God is like that. The Word of God, every Word of God has an image. Think about what he's telling Mary. Mary, you're going to be pregnant. What? Well, there's an image. <laughs> Not only are you going to be pregnant, you're going to deliver a child, 
and that child is going to be the Son of God. What? <laughs> Talk about an image. But he's saying every word of God, every word that comes from God, has the power within it to produce that image. Already, whew. <laughs> let me say it again. Jesus said the word of God functions just like a seed. And we know every seed has the power to produce the image within the seed. Wouldn't it be something if somebody handed you a, you know, you want to grow sunflowers for some reason, and somebody hands you a sunflower seed. Oh, good. I've been wanting sunflowers. Th thank you for the seed. But they say, well, now this particular seed, it, it doesn't have any power. It's a sunflower seed, but it has no power. Dude. <laughs> It's either a sunflower seed that has the power to produce sunflowers, or it's not a seed at all. A seed has the power within it to produce the image. That is the Word of God. That is exactly what this angel was telling Mary, and is what the Word of God tells us. Now, the seed must be received into good soil. Another place has a good and believing heart. Mary had a good and believing heart. She said in Luke 1.38, she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. Boy, if that's not the attitude of heart that we all need to have. But it must be received into good soil, a believing heart, you know, Remember, in Mark, and we're not going to go all the way back and reteach all these lessons again. There's, you know, Jesus talked about stony ground and thorny, thorny ground and hard ground. And, but thank God you're good ground. You really are. If you're still listening to these videos after all that we've been through, you're good ground. And, you know, the thing of it is, because if you're still listening to these videos, I believe you're also a person of prayer. You're a person who spends time in the Word. You're a person who spends time in worship. You keep your ground plowed up in a good way. I mean, you keep it fertile and growing. You don't allow it to become hard. Tell you what, if you don't spend time in the Word of God, I don't know how you survive in these days. If you don't spend time in, in His presence, in prayer, worship and even some fasting the fasting is becoming more and more of a favorite tool of mine i know that sounds weird especially coming from me i don't even hardly believe my own words but it's true and it's the peace i'll tell you what it is it's the calmness that comes i don't like it at first i don't think anybody does but boy when that when you get past that initial feed me feed me I'll kill you you know the body just rebels I'll kill you if you don't give me a donut <laughs> or whatever it is but then when that calms down and that's usually after about the third or fourth day when that calms down and that peace comes that quiet I love how Dave would Dave uh, Pastor Dave Roberson would say it's like you're, you're you're on the inside there's this stillness like a pond on a windless day when there's not a ripple it's just a, like a, a glassy surface, surface, and that's the way it becomes on the inside, peace. And boy, the Lord can get your attention when it's like that. He can, he can just throw a little pebble in there, and you'll, boy, immediately you'll, of course, you'll notice it also if the devil throws a pebble in there. But you also know how to attack it. Thank God for His peace. My peace I live with, I give you. My peace I give unto you, He said, not as the world gives. Boy, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. If you ever want a picture of that, uh, Jesus asleep on the pillow in that boat when all hell is breaking loose and uh, to the point the disciples thought they were going to die. Uh, peace that passes all understanding. It's a wonderful thing. Anyway, see, there I go. <laughs> I don't want to... We're not teaching on fasting today. <sighs> the power to produce the image is already in the seed. All it needs is to be planted in good soil, which is a good and willing heart. Now, we don't have time to go back to last June when they were teaching on the seed. 
and uh, where he started this and later on it evolved into the vine and the branches and he really he's still teaching the same thing but he's teaching it in the way of maturity now that's going to produce a revival but the, the power to produce the image is already in the seed now the number one way that you release that power first it has to come to maturity it, what I mean is, you have to believe it. <laughs> you know, the first time I ever heard, now remember, I didn't grow up in a denomination that really believed in supernatural healing. They're good people, they love the Lord, they're on the way to heaven, they will get you saved. I thank God for them. I thank God, I know why God has them on the earth today, because on any given Sunday you can go, and I don't care what, what the topic is, Somewhere in there, they're going, to, they're going to preach Christ and Him crucified. And they're going to give an altar call, and you can get saved. Thank God for them. But they didn't really believe in, in supernatural healing. I mean, they always believed that the Lord could heal, but they just never knew if He would, you know, or if He was willing to. It's just like the leper. That's exactly what the leper said. He said, I know you can heal me. I just don't know if you will. If, you know, in modern language, I don't know if you want to. Boy, immediately the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched the leper. I will. It's his will to heal you. It is his will. Glory to God. <laughs> now, the number one way that that power, the power of the seed is released. Number one, you've got to believe it in the heart and say it with the mouth. I didn't really look up that scripture, but it's in Romans chapter 10. That you got to believe in the heart and confess with the mouth. I thank God for the foundational lessons I learned about faith in the early, early days, even in the days before we even met Pastor Dave. And Pastor Dave, he would tell, he, he had to learn the same principles of faith in his early days of his walk. He told me that. And he told us that in the, in the teachings when he talks about you know, Earl Hitchin giving him those those reel to reel tapes and teaching him about faith. But I remember those early early days about uh, you got to believe in the heart. So our early early days now. Listen, faith always has two parts, not just one. You believe in the heart. That's part one. You got to believe it in the heart. Nobody starts off, I don't think, fully believing. You know, we talk about Abraham in Romans chapter 4, how he was fully persuaded and, and he didn't even consider his own body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He knew that. He knew he was 100 years old and, and he wasn't such a hot rod anymore. And he knew that Sarah's womb was not even, he, she wasn't ovulating anymore. Plainly says it was past the time of the way of women with her. He, he had those facts, but he didn't let that move him. No, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God that what God had promised, he believed what God had promised, he was able to perform. But he didn't start off that way. If you go back and you read in Genesis, it says when God told him at age, of, you know, he's uh, 99, I think, at the time. It told him, he said, you're going to, about this time next year, you and Sarah are going to have a child together. And he laughed. Sarah heard it in the tent, and she laughed. They didn't start off. Full of faith. You know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Jim Martin just did a, want, by the way, he just did a wonderful series on confession uh, down at Pastor Bronx Church uh, in February. And that's available at both websites, Jim, Jim Martin and Bronx Flint. Uh, but he's absolutely right. See, there's a, there's a time of faith building in your heart. Abraham did not start off. He laughed. He laughed. And so did Sarah. That's one of the, you know, so you know what God did? He changed their names. <laughs> so that every time he changed from Abram to Abraham. Let's just use that one. He's changed Sarai to Sarah. Let's just stick with Abra Abraham because you've probably heard this before. Abraham means, in, the, in that language, it means, I am the father of a multitude, not I will be, <laughs> I am. I am the father. God, <laughs> if you'll allow me, 
I mean, God doesn't really force him, but he changed his name. And thank God, Abram, Abram was obedient. Every time that he said his name, he, said, he, he is forced. <laughs> Can I say, if, well, if you're going to obey, then you're forced to say what God said. <laughs> it's the best lesson on confession I've ever heard. Even though he starts off, I don't believe it. Ha! You're funny, God. Oh, you're funny, God. <laughs> I'm going to have a child. Have you seen my buddy? I'm 99 years old. Have you seen my wife? She's not even ovulating. You're funny, God. Thank you. Thank you for the laugh today. I appreciate it. Sarah's over there laughing too. God goes, this won't work. <laughs> now, he'd given him hope years before. We're not going to reteach all that. But you remember he took him out on a starry night and had him... You know, give him a vision. See, there's the image in the seed. Your your children, your offspring, your seed is going to number like the stars of heaven. So there's the image, okay? All right. I don't know how many years he had been meditating and thinking about that. That had to have an effect on the inside. See, hope has everything to do with what you see on the inside. All right? So I know that had an effect on him. But he's still, he's laughing because in the natural, see, here's the thing again. The just shall live by faith and not by sight. What does sight tell Abram? Abram, I'm too old now. Uh, it can't happen now. No word from God is void of power. God says, about this time next year, you and Sarah is going to have a baby. That's the word from God. No word from God, in, in this case, no word from God is void of power. But yet Abram, at that moment, is going, uh, I'm 99. You should have come 25 years ago, God. You know, <laughs> I'm 99 now. My, my wife is, uh, you know, she's 90, I believe, and she's not ovulating anymore. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It's nice of you to come and, and give us a laugh today, Lord. God's going, okay. See, God knows how this works. Faith believes in the heart. Now, he's got an image. Believes in the heart, but says with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Now, here's another one you can put in your little... <laughs> I'm talking about the foundations of faith. If I had not have known this, I would have died of melanoma cancer in my 40s. If I had not known this truth, I would have died of melanoma cancer, cancer in my 40s before I even met Dave Roberson. Here's the truth. You will never rise above your confession. Mark it down. You, you will never rise above your confession. Now, again, let's stay with this situation. God's Looking at Abram, Abram's laughing at the promise of God. Sarah's laughing at the promise of God. They are not fully persuaded at that point. They became fully persuaded. But God's looking at them going, this won't work. I'm going to have to change what they say. See, in the beginning, confession is made unto salvation. Abraham did not believe it. Not in the beginning. Otherwise, why is it in there that he laughed? Okay, same with Sarah. <laughs> and Sarah even denied it. He says, why is your wife laughing? And Sarah goes, I'm not laughing. <laughs> yes, you did. You laughed. God says, I saw you. <laughs> so what does he do? He changes their names. See, he, in the way he instructed me in this in the early days, when, you, when, you, when you're standing for something or believing for something, and maybe in the beginning, you're not fully persuaded. Well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But what if it's not in your heart in abundance? How are you going to get it in there? With me, he, he taught me, he says, listen, every, my word, it's every time you confess my word, every time you say it, it's like your, your mouth is like the dam holding back the power of God, like a, like a dam holds back the water of a lake. And the lake is not full, though. The lake is just, you know, it's very, there's very little water in it. He said, start speaking my word. It's every time you speak it, you're like you're dumping another bucket of water in that, in that lake. You know, the word is compared to rain and, and uh, the power all the time. And 
and watering the fields and and so just you got to start somewhere well that's exactly what he did with abram he changed his name so that every time Ab eight now abraham says who he is he is saying i am the father of a multitude i mean you talk about speaking the end result i am the father of a multitude you talk about speaking the the word of god in the face of completely contradictory circumstances see i'm loving this yeah, I hope you've been following these lessons because he's having Abraham do exactly what Adam should have done. And we've taught this lesson over and over. I'm going to do it one more time as quick as I can because it's important. See, the mistake of Adam was the way out of the garden. It was the way out of all the blessing of God. We all know that. Well, what exactly did Adam do? Adam made a choice of what the truth is based on what his five physical senses told him. God had said, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, of that particular tree, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, thou shalt surely die. Satan comes directly against that and says, no, you, you will not die. And he said a bunch of other stuff. Well, eventually, Eve, she was deceived, the Bible says, so sin's not really laid at her door. But she was deceived. She ate. Adam was right there with her because she turns around, it says, and she offers it to Adam with her. So that means Adam was watching this whole thing. He knows what God said. In the day you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Satan says, you'll not die. Somebody's lying. Somebody's not telling the truth. Adam's watching. Eve takes a big bite of whatever it was, chomp, chomp, chew, chew, swallow, swallow. She doesn't fall down dead. She takes another bite maybe, I don't know. Chomp, chomp, chew, chew, swallow, swallow. She doesn't fall down dead. Now, Adam's got a decision to make, see. Eve was deceived. Adam made a cold, calculated decision based on what his five physical senses told him. I want to say it another way. Based on sight instead of faith. God had said, you will surely die. But his sight, his five physical senses are telling him something completely different. And he decided to go with sight instead of faith in God's word. Living by sight instead of faith was the way out of all the blessings of God. And that's why without faith, it is impossible to please God. The only way back into all the blessings of God is to have faith in His Word. Whoa! If you can't feel that, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what to think. Man, whew, just goes all through me the truth. And now Abraham is faced with a very similar situation. God has said. Oh, let me, let me finish up with Adam. So what should Adam have done? What should, what should Adam have done? Adam should have done. This is what faith is. He, when he saw Eve eat that apple, or apple, I'm sorry, eat the fruit of the tree, and she didn't fall down dead, what should he have done? I don't care what I see. I don't care that I can hear your voice. I don't care that I can touch you and hear you and smell you. And all my five physical senses tell me that you are alive and you did not die. I believe God's word. I, it is written, it is written, it is written. Or in his case, it is spoken, it is spoken what God said. And I will not eat the fruit of that tree. Gary, what would have happened if Adam would have done that? We'd all still be in the garden. <laughs> That's living by faith. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what Jesus said. That in Matthew 4, 4, I believe it is. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Adam... Adam should have held to God's word no matter what he saw, no matter what he felt, no matter what he smelled, no matter what he heard. 
I will obey God's word. I will have faith in God's word. I will, God is word is truth. And I will hold fast to it. Now let's fast forward to Abram because he's got a very similar situation. Everything he sees, looking at his own body, looking at his own history. You've got to remember, Abraham and Sarah had been married for decades. They were never able to have children, even when they were young and beautiful and virile. Can I say that? And fertile, her fertile and him virile. They, were, they never were able to conceive a child. You know, they wound up having one through the servant Hagar. But anyway, that's, that's another story. Trying to help God is not normally a good idea. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's another lesson. But now notice, he's faced with a very similar situation as Adam. Here God comes when Abram's 99 and Sarah's 90. He is not a hot rod anymore. And you can tell that because Sarah said, well, shall I have pleasure again for my husband? Seeing he's so old, that tells you he wasn't such a hot rod anymore. And Sarah plainly says she's past the time of the way of women. She is not ovulating. There is no egg to even be fertilized. I mean, if you're going to go by what you see, if you're going to go by what you know you feel even, if you're going to go by history, your own personal history, if you're going to go by any, if you're going to go, if you're going to live by sight, you're going to, you're going to laugh too. You're going to say, well, that's impossible, God. That's impossible. You should have come 25 years ago. See, at my age now, I have to be careful that I don't talk like that because all things are possible with God. No word from God is void of power. So God's looking at them and he's telling them about this time next year, you're going to have a child. And they both laugh. They're living by sight. They love God. They do. They love God. Abraham's called the friend of God. God loves them. What are we going to do about this situation? God goes, he's still got the vision. I don't need to take him out and show him the starry night again. He's still got that. But he's not saying with the mouth. You know what God does? How's he going to turn this around? He has to get Abram saying what God says. He changes his name. So Abraham, you know, if he's going to be on obedience, I mean, God doesn't force us to do anything. He could have just kept saying, my name's Abram, you know. And boy, a lot of people do that in a way, you know. Well, I just am what I am. And, and that, like Popeye, I am what I am, and that's all that I am, you know. Well... <laughs> You don't remember who Popeye was. Popeye the sailor man. I know, I'm, I'm showing my age again. See, and a lot of, you know, I have to be careful of that myself. Well, I've been this way a long time, especially if you've had some kind of uh, affliction or something uh, for a long time. It, it really, I, you am what you am, <laughs> you know. And that's just, you can just kind of resign to the fact that's the way it's going to be. And I think that's what happened with Abraham and Sarah. Just looking at their reaction. I want you to see, though, what God's answer was. What did God do? He said, this won't work the way it is. How do I change Abram and Sarah to where they are fully persuaded? He had to get them saying what God said. Now, see, I said earlier, the number one way that the power is released to produce the image in the word, in the seed, the number one way that God uses, not the only way, but the number one way is the spoken word of God. You can see that going all the way back to Genesis. It, you know, the earth was dark and without form, and uh, the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit was, you know, he was brooding and hovering over the face of the waters. There's the Holy Spirit with all this power pulsating through him, God the Father, God the Son's in heaven. God the Father conceives everything. God the Son speaks everything. The Holy Spirit is there with all of this power to produce everything that's needed. But he is waiting on something. Even though the power is there, he is waiting on something. He's waiting on the spoken word of God. <laughs> and I love the Hebrew. In, in our English Bible, it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. But in the Hebrew, it says, God said, light 
B. And light was. <laughs> oh! The power was released, but it was not released until it was spoken. There it is again. Don't you feel that? <laughs> I hope you're feeling it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> The number one way, the number one way that the, that that power, see again, I'm gonna tell the title again. No word of God is void of power. No word of God is void of power. In this case, the word of God to them was about this time next year, you're gonna have a baby, but I'm 99. My wife's 90, look at us. You should have come 25 years ago, God. Oh, you're funny, God. No, no, no. No, how do, how do I change this, God says? This won't work. If they keep saying, if they keep like that, this will not work. I know what I'll do. I'll get them to say what I say. I want to, every time that Abraham identifies, every time he says who he is, I am the father of a multitude. I mean, he's going right to the end result. One of the prophecies that has come forward uh, during this season was speak the end result. I don't know if that was the title, but in, in the course of there, it said, Speak the end result. Boy, that is scriptural. That is exactly what God did with Abraham and Sarah. He changed Sarah's name from Sarai to Sarah. Sarah means princess. Well, when you say the word princess, you don't think of a, <laughs> an old hag, you know. <laughs> princess, that's the young. She's going to produce the heir to the throne, see. It, it's a whole different image you know you think fertility you think young you think going to produce the air and abraham says, i am the father of a multitude well what happens as they say what god said it's just like that bucket thing that the lord taught me all those years ago they're filling the reservoir of their heart with the word of god they are renewing their mind with what god said i don't Faith comes by hearing, and it's again, Romans 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, every time they say it, they hear it. And it may have started off, uh, and obviously did start off with, okay, I'll, I'll do it just because you said it. Obviously, you know, they're laughing at this point. They don't really believe it. But see, every time that they, I am the father of a multitude. My wife is Sarah, the princess who will produce the heir. I am the father of a multitude. I am the father of a multitude. People had to think he was crazy, people that knew him. Your name has changed? Who are you now? I am Abraham. You're the father of a multitude? Aren't, aren't you the couple that never had a child? <laughs> All of their history and looking at them, you know, they look 99 and 90. <laughs> but Abraham, see, he's holding now, he's... he's one thing about Abraham, with, he had lots of faults. I, think. I mean, I kind of thank God for that. <laughs> That's why we love Peter, you know. <laughs> he made it anyway. God loved him anyway. Well, thank God he loves us even with our faults. But see, this is, this is from what I can tell, that's the only thing God did. How did Abraham go from the laughing Abraham who didn't believe God when he first heard it to the Romans for Abraham that became fully persuaded, not weak in faith. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. How did he go from the laughing, unbelieving Abraham to the fully persuaded Abraham? The only change I can see, God changed his confession. And I was, I'm having a good time today. <laughs> I, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I feel there's so many things, the Holy Spirit, the power He wants to release in your life, the power He wants to release in your church, the power He wants to release in your family, the power He wants to release in your nation. And I think He's waiting so much on our mouth. <laughs> He's waiting so much on our mouth. Now, see, it's the number one way. And you see Jesus functioning this way all the time. I mean, Jesus is the literal manifestation of the Word. That's why He is called the Word of God. When He comes into any situation like the woman that was bowed over all those years or, 
or you know the 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 man that was paralyzed for 38 years by the pool and on and on and on he didn't walk in and just be silent and think happy thoughts and gee i hope the power shows up and <laughs> no he came to destroy the works of the devil and boy he comes in like the general like the, well like the king that he is and he would speak the end result be thou woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity there's the end result woman thou art loosed from thine infir infirmity that man take up thy bed and walk what what you know the guy with the withered hand stretch forth thy hand i mean he he gives the command of the word of God. He doesn't walk in and be silent is the point. He's not silent. He speaks. He speaks the end result. He speaks the word of God. See, everything he's doing is based on the word of God. You could go all the way back to Exodus where God first said, where it's, you can look it up where he said, I am Jehovah Rapha. What he really said there is, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Whew. There you go. Jesus is everywhere he's going he is declaring that word he is in obedience to that word he is saying what god said he's declaring the end result just like Ab abraham i am the father of a multitude i am the father of a multitude it's sarah i am the princess that will produce the heir i am the princess that will produce the heir glory to god that's the only thing I can see that God changed, and it worked. No word from God is without power. Say it again. No word from God is without is void of power. I think that's the way I put it on here. No word of God is void of power. In the Amplified, it says, no word from God shall be without power. It'd be like a, a seed that's not able... It, if the seed is able to produce what's in it, or else it's not a seed at all. But Jesus said the Word of God is like seed, and the Word of God is incorruptible. The Word of God is always fresh and good and ready, just looking for the ground, just looking for the ground. I want to say it again. You'll never rise above your confession. What's Abraham's confession? I am the father of a multitude. You don't have any kids at all. I am the father of a multitude. You're 99 years old. I am the father of a multitude. Your wife's not even ovulating anymore. I am the father of a multitude. I am the father of a multitude. I am the father of a multitude. Reservoir filling, filling. And then one day, I am the father of a multitude and shazam. <laughs> Isaac was conceived supernaturally glory to God anyway <laughs> now when I said when I said a while ago that um, speaking the word of God is the number one way that that power is released it's I said it is the number one way I, and you see Jesus operating that way all the time all the time but it's not the only way and the reason I say that is later on we in the book of Acts this Peter the same Peter who denied the Lord three times don't we love Peter <laughs> the same Peter who fell so far is restored back to fellowship with the Lord and there comes a time when the presence of God he was so full of God <laughs> Peter was it says they would bring the sick people and even the demon possessed and lay them on cots on the street where Peter would walk just in the hope that his shadow would fall on some of them and they were all healed and if our, it doesn't say that Peter said anything he just see now that's a presence revival there that's a presence revival so it's a speaking as far as i can tell in that passage peter didn't speak anything now he spoke all the time he preached and, and spoke and when at the gate beautiful with the, the the man that was lame from his mother's womb he sure spoke you know he says rise up in the name of silver and gold have i none 
such as I have given I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up. And he takes him by the hand and lifts the guy up, you know. Well, praise, praise God. He spoke that time. But then there was that other time where the presence of God just so so emanated, radiated, went out from him. It wasn't his shadow. There's nothing, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you a shadow has healing power. No, if you got within shadow length, if you got that close, if you just got that close, the power of God was just, oh, I think God wants to do that with so many of us today. But see, that requires fellowship. That requires time spent with the Lord. That, that, my, what was going on there? You know what I think of when I, when I see that image on the inside? Peter's cup was running over. Remember the psalmist? My cup runneth over. Talk, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. At one point in there, he says, my cup runneth over. Peter's cup, his, his body was just overflowing. He was so full. He was overflowing. And I believe we're going to see so much of that in the prophecies that we received about this revival. He's going... My presence is, will come. You'll have a hard time standing up. You'll have a hard time entering and leaving the building. Just my presence will come. Well, hey, listen, everything is possible in that presence. But today I'm going to focus on the spoken word of God. Yes, the confession has power when it's believed in the heart and spoken with the mouth. But if you're brand new... I rem okay, cut up my candle. I remember when I first started hearing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and was speaking with other tongues. Well, I wasn't raised to believe in that either. <laughs> the, the fact I was raised very much against it. They, they just plainly said that all that had passed away. And therefore, anybody in modern times that is speaking in tongues is doing it by the power of the devil. It's very close to being blasphemy of what the, uh, the religious people said about Jesus, that he was casting out devils by the power of the devil. Well, they were saying you're speaking in tongues by the power of the devil. It's very close. And I thank God for his mercies are new every morning. The older I get, the more I love that verse. His mercies are new every morning. His compassions do not fail. Thank God for that. Love covers a multitude of sins. Thank God. But I was raised very much against against it. And then the young man that really that God sent after me in the business world when I was 33 to come get me, an uh, evangelist really named Michael Muccio, man, this guy, he spoke with tongues. I never saw such love and such power in a human until I saw Michael Muccio. And we, I was there one time when he cast a devil out of a woman. And he had made us, there. I forget how many went with him. There was five, six, seven of us maybe. But he made us promise, don't help me. <laughs> he says, no matter what you see, no matter how bad it gets, don't you help me. And he made us promise. Don't you, you, are you going to help me, Gary? No, no, I won't. You sure now you're not going to help me? No, no, I won't. And we just had to kind of just sit there and watch. I never, uh, this little Baptist boy <laughs> had never seen such things as what I saw that day. And that's not the lesson, but... I was so glad he said not to help him. <laughs> and it took a, it took over an hour. I, I don't really remember now, but it was over an hour. I never saw the like of cussing and yelling and screaming and running and all these things. But the end result, he got her free. I saw it for the first time with my own eyes. This is real. See, and, I, and the love that would flow from Michael. Well, he spoke with tongues. <laughs> This went against all of my teaching. <laughs> he spoke with tongues. And he kept talking to us about being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking with other tongues. Of course, now I know it's all through the New Testament. Jesus himself said, well, it's one of the signs that will follow them that believe the gospel. They, they shall speak with new tongues. But I sure didn't know all that then. Well, what did I have to do? I had to get full of the word. I finally, on my own, I went through the New Testament Every scripture I could find about tongues, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I found out uh, <laughs> Peter spoke with other tongues. I found out Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was in the upper room. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. Mary spoke with other tongues. I found out the Apostle Paul, who 
<laughs> he wrote over half the New Testament. I mean, many of the of the passages that my that those pastors used to tell me tongues was not for was not valid was from Paul, who said in 1 Corinthians 14, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you. And really in the the way I see it in the Amplified, it's I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. <laughs> so gee, you know, here's Peter spoke with other tongues. Uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke with other tongues. The apostle Paul, for sure, spoke with other tongues. And I'm going. And anyway, I got full of the Word of God, and I finally, I had, I finally had to have the same attitude as Mary. Be it unto me according to your word. And see, that's really the, that's a good and believing heart. When you just come to that place, all right, I believe it. Your word says it. I believe it. Be it unto me according to your word. I receive, you know. And just shortly after that, I was speaking with other tongues myself. And I thank God for it. And I thank God again for Pastor Dave Roberson that brought us such revelation knowledge about why. Why? But again, that's not the lesson today. Now, let me say it again. No, for today's lesson, no word of God is void of power. But you've got to believe it in the heart and say it with the mouth. If you're in the position of not being sure, then I'm going to recommend the same thing that G I figure God knows how this works. He knew Abraham. Okay, he doesn't he doesn't believe it. What am I going to do? I'm going to change his what he's saying. I'm going to change his confession so that every time he says who he is, he's saying what I say about him. I got to get Abraham saying what I'm saying. And we know what happened. He went from the laughing, unbelieving Abraham to the Romans chapter 4 Abraham, who was fully, not weak in faith, he staggered not at the promise of God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Get God's word in your mouth. We can go all the way back to Joshua chapter 1. It said, this book of the law, or today we would say, this word of God shall not depart out of thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth. Say it and say it and say it and then say it and then say it and then say it. It may be and incorporate hope. See, God, again, I'm going to go back and I'm not teaching on, on godly hope today. I'm just looking at my watch for your salvation. <laughs> not teaching on godly hope today. But see, I didn't know anything about combining the to the image with the confession in the early early days i just didn't know much and so god gave me an assignment to speak three verses four hours a day people say well you can't find that in the bible i beg your pardon that's exactly what he did with abram that's exactly what he did with joshua this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth this word of god shall not depart out of thy mouth when Jesus was tempted and attacked, really, by the devil, and here comes the fiery darts. He lifted up the shield of faith. It is written, it is written, it is written. He, he's speaking the word of God, speaking the word of God. So in the early days, I didn't know about incorporating hope with it. And it was like, I, I use the word of God really like a battering ram to smash down this wall of poverty a prison of poverty that the devil had us in. It was because of my own misunderstanding. I used the Word of God almost like a hammer. My God shall supply all of my need. Boom! According to His riches and glory. Bam! Uh, the young lions do hunger and suffer lack. Bam! But the, those that trust, those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Bam! And I, four hours a day, four hours a day, I just basically gutted it out just using the Word of God like a hammer. And even that worked. It finally got in my heart in abundance. It took a long time by that method, but it finally did. And we hit the bottom, the, what I call it, the day came where I stepped from one room of believing into another room of believing, and we've never been the same since. It was like the bottom of our roller coaster ride financially. And things have been different ever since. Now, we're not millionaires, but I'm telling you, he has met every need. He's 
not only our, our own needs, but he has met everything that we've needed in the ministry that he's asked us to do. We paid every debt, every bill has been paid, and we're debt free today and we're gonna stay debt free, glory to God. And anyway, but see in those days, I didn't know meant much what I know now. Now I know to incorporate hope with all my speaking. When I, I spend time on purpose now, and especially on projects, you know, there's people I'm believing for, there's things in my body now that I'm believing for, there's things in my wife's body, uh, some healings that we, we're 70, you know, I'm 76, Sue is 75, she'll be 76 soon. You know, well, am I just gonna, what am I gonna say over my body? What if I speak God's word over my body? <laughs> What if I speak God's word? He renews my youth like the eagles. I shall run and not get weary. I shall walk and not faint. Oh, so now don't forget. Don't forget his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, Gary. Who heals all of your diseases. Who delivers your life from destruction. On and on we go. Get that in my mouth. Say it and say it. Not only get my heart full, but keep it full. You can get to the point it's overflowing. I'm telling you the Word of God is your food. It's, it's your sustenance. It is, the Word is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But now the Word is in us. See, he sent his word and healed them. Jesus is the word. Gee, he, has the, he has sown the ultimate seed. God, when I say he, God the Father has sown the ultimate word into each of us. When you became a believer, he sowed the word in seed form into you. Jesus, I hear it. Jesus, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. And every word of God is full of power. It's full of power. But combine the image with what you're saying. I did not know that in the early days. Now I do. So when I confess healing over my body, I see myself. I spend time on purpose. I'll just sit on purpose. Just sit, sit in this very chair sometimes. I like to get up early in the morning, pray and, and have some coffee and, and get in the Word of God right here. I got everything I need right here. Get in the Word of God and pray and worship and spend time with Him. But on purpose, I'll just speak like over my body healing the Scriptures. And I see myself getting younger instead of older and more vibrant. I know I'm going to age. I know, you know, I understand that. But listen, Caleb, Caleb said, my, when he's 80, 80 some odd years old, he's going, my eyesight is not dimmed. My strength is not abated as I was at age 40. So I am today. And give me this mountain. <laughs> I want to be like that. Man, my body might be 80 years old. Give me this mountain. I'm well able to do what God's called me to do. I can walk uprightly before Him, and uprightly, not only righteous, but physically walk uprightly before Him. But I gotta combine hope with what I'm saying. And see, you just tear it all down. If I, if I give in and let my mouth just say, oh, my back is killing me. Oh, you know, I'm hurting all over. Oh, you know, with the ear Lord. We're back to Sarah laughing in the tent almost. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's calling what is as though it is. There's no power, no power to change what is by calling what is as though it is because it already is. <laughs> now we're to call those things which be not as though they were. That is ex exactly what Abraham, what God did to change Abraham. I am the father of a multitude. What would Gary say? I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. 
The Lord God is my healer. My Lord God is Jehovah Rapha. It is Jesus Christ. And he is my Lord. He heals me by the Father within him. Jesus himself said, it's not me really doing this. It's the Father in me. He's doing the works. With well, this glorious gospel, now we have Christ in us and the Father is in him. And it's all by the Holy Spirit. But it's the Father still doing the works. That's why the, that's why the disciples, after they were beaten for preaching Jesus, they were so happy that they got beaten. You know, Jesus said, rejoice when they persecute you. But they knew what to do. They went out and they prayed directly to the Father because Jesus told them they could. He says, I'm not going to pray for you. You can pray directly to the Father. And they said, Father, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand, thine hand, Father, to heal and to do signs and wonders by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is the Father stretching forth his hand. Last week's message, the Holy Spirit is the hand of the Father outstretched. He's the one on the earth today. It's so like Genesis chapter 1. God the Father was in heaven. God the Son was in heaven. The one that was on earth was God the Holy Spirit. Now today we have God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Jesus, the man God, God man, the glorified Jesus Christ, who is the Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, but who's on the earth? Oh, the Holy Spirit's here. The Holy Spirit's with us and in us and through us. In Him we live and move and have our being. The Holy Spirit is here. He has got all this power to manifest. Gee, I wonder if he's waiting on something. What if he's waiting on the spoken word? You say, well, I spoke it, but nothing happened. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. He didn't give Abraham really a, an option of opting out. He could have. I mean, God never makes us do anything. He didn't like, you know, get Abraham's lips and make him move. But Abraham, he's the friend of God. He obeyed God. God says, this is who you are. He said, this is who I are. <laughs> I'm going to say what you said. Get the word of God in your mouth. Do not let the word of God depart out of thy mouth. Say what he said about you. Say what he said about your children. Say what he said about your family. Say what he said about everything. And we're going to go into the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. Mm. Love you so much. My little clock tells me my time is up. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.